The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Bizarro World. I'm CJ. <laughs> and I'm Chip. And CJ's out of the bunker today. <laughs> right, we've done so well, CJ's out of the bunker. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about today. I, it's truly Bizarro World. I'll tell you right now. This is, you know, I, I am going to write all of this down and I'm going to sell it to a Hollywood production studio because this is getting to be absolutely ridiculous. Now we have Kathy Ann Viveris coming out of the gate yesterday saying on WSAR that her job was not to find out who approved or authorized the windows. Her job was to find out how the system fell apart. <laughs> the system's falling apart. So I got to ask myself, do you know what your job is? I mean, really, are you, do you think the people of Fall River are that stupid and as incompetent as the people of uh, under the employ of the city of Fall River, this is getting to be absolutely ridiculous. I mean, and the mayor, of course, you know, is not saying anything. And, you know, this is the building where nobody does windows. So, <laughs> I, so I really got to ask myself, what is going on in Fall River today? Well, that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, it, we, now we have two. First, uh, first we have the, the, uh, the mantra of, I'll get back to you on that. I don't have those figures in front of me. Uh, then we had, I know nothing. And now we have, it's not my job. Oh, man, it's not my job. No, it's somebody else's job. Well, you're the city administrator. And the last time I checked, if you are the city administrator, it's your job to administer the city and to deal with everything. You know where the buck stops there? Well, that's the last stop of the buck before it gets to the sixth floor. And we know that nothing on the sixth floor uh, is known. I mean, it's just, you know, it, it, it's, it's Willie Clueless and his band of merry screw-ups up there. <laughs> Nobody cares. It's like, hey, it's not our money. Like I said, we've got to get back to get changing the seal to a picture of Alfred E. Newman or maybe Will's head with Alfred E. Newman's ears and our new city motto. What? Me worry? It's, you know, who cares? I mean, you know, that's, that's the reality. I mean, it's, a, it's an absolute disaster. And then we get the fact that nobody, apparently, that's in, the, that's in the executive branch of government knows anything about how to run a city and prioritize. Then we have to talk about today the mayoral field, which has more people in it than, it's like a small village. It's not a mayoral <laughs> ticket, it's like a small village. Everybody and their brother is, 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 is declaring now. I'm, you know, I'm waiting for, uh, I'm waiting for a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of people from out of town to move in here or, or just say they've lived here. They'd never find, they'd never know anyway. I mean, we had a city council who lived in Swansea and, <laughs> and he said he lived on a, he lived on the dock, down at the dock of the bay. And, and he, got, he got elected and nobody ever really investigated. So uh, I don't know if we, you know, what can we talk about? Window gate first and then, then all the c candidates. Let's talk about window gate. Well, window gate and the candidates kind of go hand in hand right now because a former city administrator, Sean Kadim, decided to come out and spill the beans, so to say. And at the same time he was spilling the beans, he decided to also say, oh, and by the way, I'm running for mayor. <laughs> like we didn't already know this was gonna happen. My problem is this, like it or not, you're just as corrupt as the rest of them. Mr. Kadeem, you turned around, you said in your interview with WSAR that you knew the law was being violated. You said you knew the law was being violated. You even admitted that you violated the law but you were just following orders. I heard that before, and I'm gonna say this word again. Rick, Rick Oliveira can't cut me off right now. Nuremberg, they didn't accept it there, and we won't accept it here in Fall River. You anti-Semite. I know, I'm terrible. Nuremberg defense. <laughs> well, 
you know, the fact is, th it's true. And I mean, I don't know why people get so, you know, I mean, when you, when you, when you draw analogies and, you know, it, it, it's like they're, if they're factual based, they should be allowed to be used. I don't know why everybody gets so tense when you use anything from that era. The fact is the Nuremberg trials were a classic example of people attempting to escape the consequences of their actions by saying, I was just following orders. And with those trials, uh, you know, society began to say, listen, you have a moral obligation, you know, you have an, uh, you, you know, to, to not do something you know is, is just so objectionable that, you know, it's immoral, basically. And you can't just say, I was following orders. You can't use that excuse. I'm sorry. It doesn't play anywhere. And but Nuremberg was when they did it. And b virtually every war criminal since then has basically said the same thing. I was, you know, I was just following orders or I was acting in what I thought was the best interest of, of you know, Mein Kemp and stuff like that. But... It's, you can't do this. No, and the biggest problem, the biggest problem with even, you, you know, even saying I was just following orders is you knew it was illegal. You did it anyhow. Now, the mayor and Kathy Ann Viveris are throwing Sean Kadim under the bus. Sean Kadim is throwing the mayor and Kenny Pacheco under the bus and Liz Souza. Um, so not only do we have a city council that can't do anything amongst themselves without fighting and bickering, we now have current administration and previous administration with the same person at the head of the body arguing amongst themselves and all the fingers are pointing. You've got the in Inspector General now looking into Fall River. You have the U.S. Attorney General looking into Fall River. You have the FBI looking into Fall River. You have the state police looking into Fall River. You have a special prosecutor looking into the mayor. Um, how many more things do we have to have before we finally say, I give up, I'm done, I rest my case? We're scum. That's it. <laughs> well, we've gotten the dubious distinction of being the only city that was worse than us, supposedly, for political corruption and, and, and political, uh, you know, uh, cesspools was Lawrence, which ironically enough is the only city in, f in, in the state of Massachusetts that is poorer and has fewer businesses than Fall River. So isn't it amazing that these, these, this type of government uh, seems to be only found in cities that are that are not doing well. It seems that when you look at cities that are doing well, uh, politicians and government officials are held responsible for their actions. If you go to the cities that have a lot of business, have higher per capita incomes, you find that if a politician did one one thousandth of what some of these people do in Fall River, uh, they would immediately be investigated, thrown out. I mean, just look at, is it uh, one socket now? The, the mayor's being held up on an ethics violation because she hired uh, her son to do uh, for a city job with, without putting it out. But Christ, we do. We do uh, that every day. <laughs> we do that. I mean, we, you know, we get windows put in. And I actually saw it. It's how convoluted uh, some of the logic is in this city that I actually saw somebody say, what are we complaining about? We got the windows for free. It's like, really? We didn't get them for free. Some guy got stiffed for 50000 for a scaffolding, and who knows how much they knocked off the other guy's tax bill, and all the questions of why he got it. And to get back to Mr. Kadeem, well, as you said, CJ, um, there's something called the fiduciary responsibility. And that means that as a city administrator, he has a fiduciary responsibility to the citizens, to the taxpayers, and to the city, to do his job. Uh, he is the keeper of, of the money, in a way, uh, the overall keeper. We have treasurers, we have a layer, but the fact is that as the city administrator, he has a fiduciary responsibility to the city to ensure that laws are obeyed, to ensure that there's a process, that there's a bid process to ensure that the people get the best bang for their buck. But as we've seen with this amazing dismantling of, of, of our government, people have now, we've taken the lid off pa Pandora's box and we've seen just how ineffective, inefficient, and corrupt the city government is. You know, I don't think there's a cesspool company around that can handle 
the amount of shit we have here in Fall River. Excuse my language, viewers. But, I mean, I'm being very honest. We have, uh, Fall River has become a huge cesspool. My big question is, and, and Mr. Kadim, if you'd like to answer it, please feel free to give us a phone call, is why would you, as the town administrator of Seekonk, want to come out now with this information and then announce that you're going to run for mayor? Because basically, you're the mayor of Seekonk. Or is it maybe that your contract might be coming up for renewal and you're not sure it's going to get renewed? Especially now that you're a key part of an investigation to criminal activity. Do the selectmen of Seekonk know? I wonder. I have to ask. Because you've opened up another can of crap that Fall River really didn't need but we knew was coming along. Um, you know, I used to say all the time what this town really needed was an enema. Well, <laughs> right now what it needs is something to plug up the hole because <laughs> it's just flowing. <laughs> well, as a candidate and oh, as a city administrator in Seekonk, I'm sure that the residents of Seekonk who are having, you know, great entertainment reading about what's happening in Fall River. Now when this is, uh, when this becomes uh, common knowledge in Seekonk, I'm sure that the, the, the residents of the town of Seekonk I'm going to now question whether someone who knowingly violated the law as a city administrator in one community should be their town administrator. Because, you know, Mr. Kadeem freely admitted he knew that the law was being violated, um, but he did what he was told. But what he also did say is he talked about the phantom mayor. Mm. The devil in high heel sneakers. <laughs> the phantom mayor. We, everybody is, there's always been these rumors about who is the mayor. And does the mayor really, is the mayor actually wearing high heels? And Mr. Kadim implied that and said basically that, you know, the mayor and the corporation council were running the city. There are many people who think it's the corporation council, period. And, but that, that's another issue here. And the fact is that everybody has known this for a very, very long time. It's been implied. And yet, what has been done about it on the city level? Absolutely nothing. And this is the problem. And what really bothers me is the statement that Oh, you know, everybody in this city just kind of understands that you really don't have to do what the law says. You kind of just expect people to lie, expect people not to obey the law. And, you know, department heads really are kind of like, ah, you know, uh, if the mayor tells me what to do, I will do it, even if it's a violation of the law, which is why I have always been an opponent of contract department heads. And the fact is that many years ago, before most of you were born, and even when I was young, uh, we had all civil service department heads, school department. And in those days, guys like Frank Manning, who was in charge of DPW, used to walk in and tell the city council, look, at this is the way it is. You don't like it? Tough. You know, and, and as did Bob Nagel, who was the superintendent of schools, and department heads just routinely laid it on a line. They told the truth. They said, look, we got to have this money. This is why you can't do this. You can do this. This is not legal. And why? Because their jobs were protected. And then the politicians do what they always do. You know, let's not be held accountable. Let's figure out a way around that. So they, they put on this giant campaign of how civil service is this horribly, horrible thing. You can't get rid of these people. That's bull. The fact is, Chapter 31, Sections 41 through 45, are the disciplinary procedures to remove anybody in civil service. And I've been a part of those proceedings. I've seen people removed. But the problem is, in civil service, you actually have, a, have to have a legitimate reason to terminate someone. And a legitimate reason isn't that he's not doing what the mayor wants, that he's doing what he, what he should be doing as a department head. And that's the reason that we have contract department heads, because a contract department head, if he doesn't do what the mayor tells him, is no longer a department head. Well, you know, 
this week over the radio, um, especially on the three to six o'clock hour, uh, the one of the hosts has left. Wayne Rigo has left the radio station. Uh, a lot of rumors as to why. Um, maybe he's going to run for mayor too. Why not? <laughs> Everyone else is, but. You know, people would call in, they'd say, well, you know, maybe Kenny Pacheco should lose his job. And people would then turn around and say, oh, no, no, he shouldn't lose his job. He was just doing what he was told. And somebody actually called and said, so if, if the mayor turned around and killed somebody and Kenny was supposed to hide the body, that's okay because he was just doing what he was told. They hung up on him. The radio station actually hung up. On him. We're not going to go there. Nobody was kidnapped. Nobody was murdered. But, you know, they can't put the two, you know, the radio station doesn't want to put the two together. They don't want to say, you know, when I called and talked about Nuremberg, they went, click, <laughs> we're not going to talk to you. <laughs> you know, I've been called a political pundit, which I thought was very interesting. But you have to say to yourself, yes, we know that people working for the city, it is their livelihood, but I'm sorry. The people who are responsible for Windowgate are the mayor, corporate counsel, Sean Kadeem, and Kenny Pacheco. Those are the people involved, directly involved in one way or another. All those people are directly involved. In my opinion, all of them should get fired. And let me say, I think Kenny Chico is a great guy. I like Ken. I think he's been a very, very good overall department head, one of our best. He really cares about his employees. He does the job. However, with that being said, <coughs> by city ordinance, the Department of Community Maintenance, or formerly DPW, is responsible for building maintenance on all city buildings by ordinance. Therefore, he is responsible for those windows. That's right. And the fact is, as much as I like Kenny, and we get back to being a contract department head, and what Sean Kadeem talked about, integrity, to me, there comes a point where your integrity has to, has to supersede your your position. You'd say, well, the fact is that, okay, you know, I'm not going to do this. It's wrong. It's illegal. The city, yeah, you know, and that's what happens. And I don't care what heckle and jekyll you said between three and six. <coughs> it's not an excuse. He was doing what he was told. He has to have a job. Well, you know something, go get a job in another city. You know, I mean, that's the position, that's the, that was the, that would be the position that, that Mo that someone should take, in my opinion. The fact is, look, he's been a very good department head. He's got a good resume. And when put in a position where he has to violate the law, freely, unfortunately, freely, and, remember, and of his freely. own accord, that's right. And of his own accord, he has to be held responsible too. As much as I, I like Ken, the fact is that you've got to be held accountable, as you said. And people go, oh, that's an extreme example. But really, is it? Is it? If, if the mayor does something blatantly illegal, and they, this is, you know, and then they say, well, I have to do what I'm told. Well, guess what? There are a lot of questions out there about why this is happening. There's been questions about why the mayor's still carrying a gun. You know, and there's a contract chief, and I like Dan Racine, too. But the fact is, if you or I or any citizen of the city of Fall River what, had allegations about improper use, not even with a gun, but if you had something that was a threatening, yeah, that they, they would immediately confiscate your permit and every weapon you have. But why wasn't it done for the mayor? Why? Because the mayor's the mayor. And the fact is, he is not the emperor. He is the mayor, and he is subject to all the laws that everyone else is. No, he's not. He's got blue lights. <laughs> True. True. But, you know, the, the thing is, is that, you know, some of the other things that came out amongst Windowgate, which is very interesting, Page Your Throw came up. Another sore spot in the city of Fall River. And the recommendation to the mayor was not Page Your Throw. The recommendation was to privatize trash hauling in Fall River <clears throat> because very few cities and towns handle their own waste management. It's now contracted out. But if that would have happened, somebody would have lost a department head job, okay? And a certain administrator would not have been able to tax the people of Fall River to death to make up for his budgetary shortfalls. So instead, we went to pay as you throw in a slipshod manner. 
And even Sean Kadeem said that Page to Throw is a program which must be implemented over a six to nine month period. Just like who? The Department of Environmental Management says in the 60 some odd page book that they have for that. But, yeah. but I guess that doesn't apply to Fall River. This is for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts except Fall River. Uh, yeah, well, nothing, nothing applies. You're right. And, and the fact is, pay as you throw rears its ugly head everywhere. Yeah. You know, and, and the fact is that, you know, it just reconfirms the fact that pay as you throw was a way to tax the people of Fall River. It wasn't implemented. And, and the other factor is, too, that he was facing an election at the time. And if he dismantled a city department and put a bunch of city employees out of work, their families and their friends would have retaliated at the polls. And, you know, one thing that Mayor Flanagan is notorious for is a total disregard for the, for the money of the taxpayers in the city of Fall River. Uh, this is why he gave pay raises to everybody who he had to lay off. So he'd have to lay off more people. Because any time there was an election, he bought his way in. He gave everybody a pay raise, every department. And this is the reason when Sean Kadeem, oh, and by the way, Sean Kadeem did say on the radio, I think, that he, he, there was no deficit. The deficit that the mayor said was, was there did not exist. And how he could say that is just, you'll have to explain that to me, Sean, because uh, let's just take one of the factors, not the grant for the police, not the closing and, and the loss of the host fees in the, in the trash, uh, in, in the dump, but the fact that we lost a $14 million SAFER grant that funded about 80, 80 positions on the fire department. So if we were funding 80 positions and not all firefighters, some are lieutenants and captains, um, and their benefits, and we lose that money, and these positions are still in the budget, how do we not have a deficit? It's the money fairy. No, not me. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, but I think one of the most amazing things is, and uh, Burns, the fire department uh, union president, said uh, that they're hoping to qualify for some uh, staff stabilization money for the fire department, um, supplemental money. And Burns was hoping that that would bring firefighters back. Instead, it's going to replenish the overtime budget, which they spent in two months, by the way, uh, and we don't have anything. We're $15,000 over budget right now. So that money's gonna come in to replenish what we don't have so that we can spend it again so that in two or three more months we don't have it again because this, the staff cuts are such that the firemen have to work 60 hours plus a week, which is all overtime hours. So. How do you do this? You don't. The fact is, as usual, another, you know, classic example of total mismanagement, not having a clue on how to, you know, control spending. The depleted a year's worth of overtime in two months, three months. Uh, the reason they did that is short staffing, pay raises that weren't factored into the overtime budget and many issues. But the fact is to take a grant and put it into overtime when the overtime is virtually uncontrollable because of the, the short staffing, it's like what, what happens when that grant runs out? Here we are again, everybody. Guess what? We'll run out of money again and there will be no grant and we will be faced with the same problem. Why do the people who run this city continue to allow them to come before the council and say, we're going to fix this ongoing problem with a grant. You can't do it. It's impossible. If you have a bill that's going to be there all the time, as overtime is, overtime is a necessity in all departments. There are going to be overtimes. You have to backfill for vacations. You have to backfill for sick people calling in sick, and you should have some cushion with manpower so that every time someone calls out, you don't have to have an overtime, but we don't. And the fact is, these are ongoing bills. It's like your gas bill, your electric bill. You know, 
you can't pay your gas and have it in your budget because you hit a scratch ticket. Oh, we don't live by the, by the lottery? You know, you can't do that. And, and the fact is, how many times are we going to go down this road of total fiscal mismanagement? You know, the bottom line is at the beginning of the show, I think CJ said something about the, you know, the fact is, you know, what are we going to do here and what we have as a government? But the fact is, the only cure to this is to just wipe them right out. Just get rid of everybody because you can't have people who support this thing. The only people that should get a vote are the people who are going to look at this city realistically and the councilors who have said, look, we're not going to do this anymore. And anybody like my favorite counselor, uh, Pat Casey, and her cohort, Mr. Present, <laughs> uh, you know, people like that just have to go, you know? And we can't have people who, who fear, uh, you know, any kind of, of retaliation from the mayor. Uh, government is supposed to be a set of checks and balances. And, you know, everybody likes this, this, this idea they try to sell you. You know, they're going to feed you this pablum that government is all singing, holding hands and singing kumbaya. That's absolute horse manure. Well, Fall River is a city of checks. Yeah. You have to admit, they, lots yeah, of checks. A lot of checks. But, <laughs> and chow mein sandwiches. But the fact <laughs> is, government is supposed to be about people balancing each other. You yeah. know, once in a while, a disagreement is not a bad thing, people, because if somebody's doing something wrong, we want everybody to disagree. We can't all walk in lockstep. The last time people walked in lockstep, it was a goose step. Boop. Did I say that? <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been a really great show. Uh, we want you to keep those tips coming in. Chip and I have a lot of work to do over the next couple of days, and we have uh, some more news coming to you on Friday, and next week is the big week. Yeah. <laughs> See you in court, everybody. We may broadcast <laughs> live. So thanks, uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day. This has been Spindle City Straight Talk.